Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today, on this Thursday of the 19th week of Ordinary Time, this Mass is celebrated for the eternal rest of Tom Strunk. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness, and our brothers and sisters, too. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Now, son of man, during the day while they are looking on, prepare our baggage as though for exile. And again, while they are looking on, migrate from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will see that they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage like an exile in the daytime while they are looking on. In the evening, again, while they are looking on, you shall go out like one of those driven into exile. While they look on, dig a hole in the wall and pass through it. While they look on, shoulder the burden and set out in the darkness and cover your face that you may not see the land. For I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did as I was told. During the day I brought out my baggage as though it were that of, exile, of an exile. And in the evening I dug a hole through the wall with my hand. And while they looked on, I set out in darkness, shouldering my burden. Then in the morning the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, ask you what you were doing? Tell them. Thus says the Lord God. This oracle concerns Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel within it. I am a sign for you. As I have done, so shall it be done to them. As captives, they shall go into exile. The prince who is among them, shall shoulder his burden and set out in darkness. Going through a hole, he is dug out in the wall and covering his face, lest he see be seen by anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not, Do not forget, forget the, the works, works of, of the Lord. Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God, the Most High, and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were fruitless like their fathers. They recoiled like a treacherous bow. Do, Do not, not forget, forget the, the works, works of, of the Lord. Lord. They angered him with their high places and with their idols roused by jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do, Do not, not forget, forget the works of the Lord. Lord. And he sur surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory into the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged by his inheritance. 
Do not not forget forget the the works works of of the Lord. Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should not you have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back the whole debt. So will the heavenly Father, so will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each one of you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Uh, regarding our Gospel, um, Uh, I will make comment on that uh, this coming week. But first, and I guess the only uh, homily about, is about our prophet that we have this week, the prophet Ezekiel. Um, And the prophet, uh, there are four major books of prophets uh, in the Old Testament. Isaiah, the biggest, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And they're major prophets because they have the most written about them. They have their own books. The most famous of the prophets in the Old Testament was Elijah, without a doubt. But Ezekiel is my favorite. And the reason he is my favorite because Ezekiel is very straightforward in what he says. He is very much uh, knowing the limitations of humankind. And he's also one of great hope and of also a personal responsibility. Ezekiel begins uh, the book uh, explaining this theophany, his encounter with God, this vision he had, and it's three times removed. Such was the vision of the glory, of the likeness of the Lord, as he, ex- as he ex- describes God in all his splendor. And then he describes God's, uh, he describes rather how humankind, how the residents of Jerusalem have offended God. They've turned to pagan uh, idols. Uh, And this is what we had yesterday. We had that these six men in this vision, these six men came and they came to the temple and there was one who was like a scribe with a linen, white linen and a uh, uh, that of the trappings of a scribe, the instruments of a scribe. And the scribe was, an angel was to mark on everyone's head a taw. And of all the, of all the uh, if you will, all the faithful ones were marked with this taw. And taw is a Greek letter for T. Now, what does, does it exactly mean? I have forgot. <laughs> but a taw, the taw, this mark, was very much in keeping with the 
practice of sprinkling, chapter 12 of Exodus, uh, uh, sprinkling blood on the doorpost, on the lintel of the doorpost, so that the angel of death might pass him over. Uh, or if we look in chapter 7 of Revelation, uh, the uh, elect, the 144,000, bear an imprint, a seal on their forehead. We're not told what it is in there, but we know that if they have that, then they are saved. Well, this ta does the same thing. They're known to be faithful. And the others are, are, are cast aside. And after that, the throne, God's footstool, moves from the temple. Uh, and it goes and it follows the people. It goes to, and this is, we have to keep in mind, this is occurring about 580, 590. Uh, the Chaldeans are, have sacked Jerusalem. They're taking everyone away. And this is the prophecy today is about how the prince, this is a little bit before the exile, how the, how the, the residents of Jerusalem, in this case the prince, is going to knock a hole through the wall and seek to escape. And his way of showing that is that he actually, Ezekiel actually carries out this, <laughs> this play, does this little play where he knocks a hole in a wall, doesn't say anything, he's taking these goods with him, his personal possessions, and they ask him, oh, what's going on now as he's walking away? Well, thus it shall be with the prince, uh, with the leaders of Jerusalem. Uh, they, shall, they shall flee their city. Uh, and in this one, we, we hear that. Ezekiel's one who's, who is, he's, he's all business. And he's meaning to tell uh, that this God's throne follows his people. It's not bound to the, to the, uh, to the temple. And God's throne is, is that which is carried by cherubim, or rather by four seraphim. Uh, carry this throne of God, and it follows the people with the wheels, as if it's a chariot, and it goes to... Uh, this new, their land of their exile, uh, a land of the Chaldeans. And there, Ezekiel, and Ezekiel was also led in, in captive. Uh, he was a priest of the Levite tribe. He was led in captive to there. And there he also begins a series of, of prophecies. And he's, he's very realistic. And we may have it. I haven't read that far ahead in the coming weeks. But... Uh, Ezekiel, in chapter 15, a few more chapters, we'll see that Ezekiel is saying, oh, so you're going to run down to Egypt, will you? You say, we shall flee the Chaldeans. Can you run? Can you run as fast as horses? And if he will, he, he, if he will taunts those who think that they will uh, uh, get away from God's overreaching and overarching providence and such. And for as much as Ezekiel's, if you will, his... His, uh, his cool professionalism as a prophet. He gives us the most beautiful uh, that we have, the promise of the resurrection. And that is, we see in 30, chapter 34 of Ezekiel, where Ezekiel is, uh, the word of the Lord came to me and it said, Son of man, prophesy over these dry bones. And so this prophecy begins and the bones come together and he prophesies, prophesies again and the bones uh, uh, gather sinew and flesh and he prophesies again and the spirit of God comes into him and, this, and it's a very very hopeful uh, uh, prophecy of the house of Israel coming back together again and being brought, brought back to life again but it also points to the resurrection it also points to us receiving a glorious new body in God this is one of the uh, great things about Ezekiel he was, able to, he was able to convey that in very powerful form if you want to take anything away from Ezekiel or, or if you would like to hey, take away from the prophet Ezekiel Ezekiel shows us that God is merciful, but God also demands an account of us. So, child is not punished for the mistakes of his father or grandfather. That is not, that is not the case. The person themselves are responsible for their actions. And the persons themselves will be accountable for their actions before God. And Ezekiel urges us uh, to... to if you will, lead our lives in following God because he's promising us great things and according to Ezekiel, he can do it. 
My brothers and sisters, let us please stand and bring our needs before God's altar. We pray that the Lord may help all members of the church to grow in compassion and forgiveness. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who are isolated and separated by sin. May they receive the God, grace of God for repentance, for reconciliation. For this we pray to the Lord. We also pray for the parishioners of our parish that we may be guided by Jesus to grow in charity and hospitality. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for those who give them themselves in service to the public good, particularly those who care for the health of others. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And to, and to our Lord we give our own needs, wants and desires in silence. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died and gone before us. May our God in his mercy forgive their sins. May he grant them eternal light in heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers we place before you. You who rule forever and ever. Amen. We may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O God, be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with all the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are holy indeed, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Carl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill of finest wheat. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since 
I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm in us the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, announcement uh, on Friday, rather on Saturday, the 15th, we'll have the celebration of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother at 9 a.m. We'll have Mass in the morning. So uh, please come. It's a wonderful thing to, uh, to venerate our Blessed Mother. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen.